advantage in that instance. So it's worth noting that Glover seemed to settle for second in the first moto, maybe with an eye toward taking the upper hand in this second one. Well, Jim, I think Brock had backed off a little bit at the end of that moto because he was tired. Remember, he had fallen at the first turn in that moto and was right at the back of the pack, had to come all the way through. I think he was trying to save his energy. The battle, too, between Honda with Bailey aboard and Yamaha with Glover. Now, there they are, lined up along the grid. Those who will start the second moto. There has been some attrition. Ronnie Lachine, who led early in the first moto, has not started. The two key men to watch for as they come out of the chute, number 11, David Bailey, number 14, Brock Glover, and there they go out onto the race course. And there at the front of the pack, number three, whom you see with the lead right there, is David Thorpe of England. 11, Bailey is at the front as well, and the crowd roars as Bailey goes into the lead. And also right up there at the front with David Bailey, you can see him right behind him is Brock Glover. So already the battle is set as Glover and Bailey have gone to the front early in the second moto, and no script could have been written better for the beginning of the second moto. Bailey in the lead, Glover on his rear wheel. Number three, Thorpe is in third place. Behind them, the rest of the riders stringing out, and the drama is right at the front of the pack. And I think, Jim, that both the Americans in the lead feel that, of course, they must win this moto. Uh, Glover knows that he has to. Uh, Bailey, Desperately, of course, trying to hang on and win the second one and thereby win overall. There's no question of holding back. There's really not a big factor of strategy. This is going to be an all-out race, and I think it's only in the last 10 minutes of the moto when physical fitness begins to tell its story that we're going to really see who's going to win this thing. Right now, they are relatively fresh. They have had a brief period to rest between motos. Both men finished the first moto riding in relaxed fashion. Neither of them pressed to the limit because they were totally satisfied with their first and second place positions during the final laps of that moto. They trained together here on this course a week ago. They know each other's moves in very intimately from years of racing against each other in the Supercross Series and the National Motocross Series here in the USA. And so they have all of the equipment they need to deal with this situation. It's just a matter of who is going to ride better in this second moto. It's hard to think of two competitors who have more respect for each other. You know, I've been talking, Jim, to both these men in the last few minutes, and I have a hunch, it's just a hunch, that Brock Glover thinks he is faster than David Bailey, basically faster. And you know what? I think David may think so, too. So if that's true, then Bailey obviously feels he has got to stay with Brock Glover, that he can't let him get away or he'll be beaten. They have completed one lap, and those two have already put a few seconds between themselves and the third-place bike. So at the moment, it is precisely the one-two battle which we highlighted for you at the beginning of this moto. David Bailey, number 11, 23 years old from Axton, Virginia. Brock Glover, number 14, also in his early 20s. Glover from El Cajon, California, here in San Diego County. Bailey led in both motos here a year ago. Glover wound up winning the overall championship here. Look at Glover fight to keep control of that. Glover has changed his leathers and his helmet between the two motos. You see him now in this bright pink. I don't recall his having worn that before in this event. Whether that was a psychological ploy, uh, conceivably to work on the mind of David Bailey, a very conservative man, I don't know. It certainly surprised me to see Brock Glover turn up in pink. Uh, nonetheless, it certainly isn't affecting his riding style uh, at all. I am told that Glover has worn the pink leathers in one previous race, that an all-star race of champions appearance, and that he regards them as a lucky outfit for him. They are, and not to just use the pun, but a shocking sight on a motocross course. <laughs> However, he is a man who physically could be described as in the pink. Now I think we've taken that about as far as it will go. So we're on lap two of what for the moment is a two-man showcase. There goes Glover on the inside. Brock Glover going by David Bailey. So now Glover holds the lead for the very first time early in the second moto. 
Glover, perhaps attempting to establish psychological dominance right away, has taken the lead away from David Bailey. Never ridden the second moto of a motocross can attest. This ranks among motorsports as the ultimate young man's pursuit. So dominated by teenagers and riders in their early 20s that the leader here, 25-year-old Brock Glover, is already being retired from motocross by some racing journalists. I just turned 25, and I don't really think that's that old. And uh, if everyone talks about it, and I tell myself I'm getting old, and that maybe, you know, that could happen. But I don't feel I'm really that old, and I think I'm on the prime of my career. I'm doing better this year than I've ever done, and uh, I'm leading the outdoor championship. And I'm also leading the indoor Supercross championship, which is the first time I've ever done that. So I'm pretty happy with what's going on this year, and I don't really feel like retiring as of yet. And certainly, Sam, if he can hold on to the lead he presently enjoys and become the first American ever to win the United States Grand Prix motocross two years in a row, retirement will be farther than ever from his mind. Well, look at this. It's a beautiful ride, and Brock is pulling substantially ahead of Bailey right now. I think it's exactly this kind of speed, Jim, that David Bailey feared Brock Glover had. Glover and the Yamaha, an excellent combination. He's lost it. Unbelievable. He'd been pressing so hard, he lost it. Now he's trying to restart it. David Bailey goes riding by Brock Glover into first place. Glover is able to get the bike going again, and there's such a large margin between those two riders and third place David Thorpe that Thorpe, by the time he reaches that point on the course, won't even be aware that Glover suffered a mishap. But Brock Glover has just put some suspense back into Moto2 as he has ceded the lead to David Bailey. If his confidence has not been shaken by that fall, then he should be able to catch Bailey again. Now, of course, we'll be further into the moto. This is a look at what happened. It looks as if on that extremely dry, almost adobe-like surface, he just got on the throttle a little too soon coming off of that turn. Partly, that's why he was so fast. He was getting the throttle on very quickly in the turn. What I was going to say is, it'll be deeper in the moto, of course, if he's able to catch Bailey again, and Bailey will defend his position more rigorously, I think. Very exciting stuff. Well, this is precisely the opportunity that David Bailey has almost certainly been daydreaming about since his two mishaps here one year ago. He believes he should have won this event last year. He wants very badly to win it this year. For this particular racer, every moto begins at home in the tiny South Virginia community of Axton where one of the world's most elaborate backyard dirt bike courses gives David Bailey a constant opportunity to rehearse his chops. The sons of football players play football, and lifelong gym rats beget toddling gym rats. Bailey's father lived for motocross, and for a long time, young David knew that he would too. Bailey's success has given him the luxury of dictating the terms of his existence. For most motocross racers, that would mean the opulence of Southern California. For David, it means the quiet solitude of Virginia. I don't really enjoy being in the heart of the city. I, when I go to eat at a restaurant, I don't have to wait 45 minutes. When I want to go riding, I want to be able to put on my gear and go riding, not have to load up, go get gas, drive in traffic. And I think the, the riding areas are becoming less and less in California, where here I have a couple hundred acres that I can ride anytime I want, any time of the day. I have a little lake that I can go jet skiing on. I don't have to go anywhere. And it, it just makes everything a lot easier for me to do. I enjoy the country. I lived in the city for until I was about 10 years old, and I didn't enjoy it all that much. I like it much better here. It is a part of David Bailey's fulfillment that he is making his father's dreams come true. And for any American motocross racer, one of the biggest dreams is to win this event, the United States Grand Prix. So there is much at stake now for David and for his mother and father as he circles the course with the lead in the second moto. Sometimes it's very hard when you've been pressing hard to suddenly change your rhythm and have a big lead, a commanding lead. Brock is down again. Brock Glover down once more, and he looks, frankly, he looks a little groggy to me. A second mishap for Glover in this moto, a moto that began so brilliantly for him as he came out and seized the lead from David Bailey. But now, as Glover unhurriedly begins to get back on his bike, Bailey's lead is getting larger and larger. Ah, ah, he's going the wrong way on the course. Now, that's something that is against the rules. You see, he rode slightly downhill. He's going uphill now, and that helped him restart the bike. It's a nitpick, I realize, but that is against the rules. He gained an advantage from it. 
well, arguably, you see, it might have been harder to start his bike on the uphill. I mean, I think he's a little groggy right now. But apparently not a bit groggy, and now riding with a commanding lead is number 11, David Bailey, trying to secure victory in the second moto to go with the one he has already put away in moto number one. He looks pretty fit still, Jim, but you know, he's probably feeling more tired than if Brock Glover was actually pushing him because he has time to think about it a little. We're talking now with Gary Bailey, the father of David Bailey, even as we watch David dominating Moto2. Gary, it appeared early in this Moto that Brock was faster, was able to put a margin between himself and David. Do you think he was going too hard at that point? Well, I think he might have been, and that's just one thing that David was counting on. He was hoping that Brock was going to push himself a little bit and possibly make a mistake. The other thing was we kind of felt like looking at Brock after the first moto, he was a little bit more tired than David was. So what David's strategy was was to stay within striking distance of at least uh, four or five seconds, and then hopefully on the last 15 minutes of the race to put on a charge. Would you like to see him quit soon? I'd like to see him quit while he's strong and number one. I, I hope he doesn't drag it out and wait till he starts falling back to, to get out of it. I think he gets another three years in and, and uh, performs really well as he has, and I expect that he will. Uh, I think that will be sufficient. All right, thanks very much, Gary Bailey, for joining us and giving us your impressions on what is a thrilling day for the whole Bailey family. And now, the last chance to appreciate the efficiency and indeed the artistry of David Bailey as he proceeds through his last lap over this course. He hangs on to win, as he apparently will. He will be the first man to win both motos in this event since the first American to win it, Marty Motes, back in 1980. And he seems to be accelerating just a little bit as he tries to juice up the crowd a little bit on this last lap going by some of the slower bikes. Bailey is enjoying this over victory not only over the entire field but most specifically over the man who is his primary competition among top young american motocross racers brock Glover chased him in the early part of this photo this will be incidentally only the third victory in the united states grand prix for the honda factory and that's a little bit surprising because they are preeminent among all of the factory teams in this sport for the past few years now bailey number 11 waving to the crowd comes under the footbridge and makes one of the last turns onto what amounts to the front straight as he heads toward the checkered flag. California crowd in Carlsbad watches now as David Bailey, a Virginian, takes off his goggles, throws them to the crowd over the devil's drop, and with an easy victory, David Bailey has made up for a full year of disappointment. Last year he led both motos and didn't win this year, he won them both. And we've just learned that for riding his bike against the grain of the course, Glover was disqualified from the second moto. That dropped him to seventh overall. Second place overall went to Thorpe of England, improving his chances to win the World Grand Prix Championship. Third place to George Jobet of Belgium. Now, for Sam Posey, this is Jim Lampley saying so long from Carlsbad, California.